do it? All right. All right, guys. We have another podcast here. This is going to be a short and sweet one, but we're going to talk about how you can maximize the customer value and that for uh, just basically the overall lifetime value of a customer and that um, through maximizing ROI through customer relationships. So we're going to talk about it from both the business side as well as the employee side. How can you do it as a salesperson to where you can get more commission? build more value, bring into the company, and honestly get more as an individual and everything to build those relationships. And then how can you do that as a business owner, especially when you're trying to bootstrap everything to make it to where we're not working harder, we're working smarter, and it's not quantity, it's quality. So um, from the business perspective, we'll just go right into it. I mean, business perspective. Yeah, the business perspective and that the biggest thing that you can do, and it's kind of, I feel like it's pretty much universal in any relationships that you want to build. The, the best way to build value with those is pour value into them. Stop thinking about yourself, start thinking about the customer. What is going to serve them best? What is going to serve your clients? What is going to serve your potential client uh, customers? And then also, any time that you're dealing, like it, whether you're dealing with like BNI network marketing group, whether you're dealing with chamber of commerce, whether you're dealing with somebody you met on the elevator, you don't think of them necessarily as the person you're trying to sell to. You treat them as a friend that can refer you to 20 other businesses. Yeah, because right? you never know what doors they can open or what connections they might have. I'm a big fan of being able to talk about things that don't have to do with your products and services so that you can earn that right to ultimately talk about the things that have everything to do with your products and services. And so that point that you meant of like poor value that you shared with, with pouring value into them has nothing to do with me trying to sell them something. It's genuinely finding out who they are, what they're all about, some of their challenges or struggles, but uh, use caution as you do that. My, my biggest, um, sales question I hate is what keeps you up at night? It's like, well, you don't know me. Why should I tell you about my sleeping habits right now? Unless we're in a mattress store. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> most of us, you know, some of us are selling mattresses. Most of us aren't, but uh, be able to jump to that without building that relationship first, you're going to get nowhere. Yeah, absolutely. And this is where, like, honestly, if you think about it this way, a lot of sales guys in that will become pushy sales guys because they don't have any consideration for anybody but themselves, what they want out of it. And anybody that doesn't do their way is, is stupid. And that's a very toxic sales culture that you want to avoid. So really the reality is um, like uh, there's plenty of relationships and everything that they were good friends and other stuff. And in fact, I poured tons of value into them. I never saw any return out of it. Right. Sure. However, because of the fact that I didn't, I wasn't a bitter taste in their mouth, that they still referred to me as a good person and everything else. They knew somebody else that we connected with better, that provided more value, that then was able to refer me to other businesses. And so you're, that is, goes into your network as your net worth, right? Uh, whether you're an employee or a business, it's universal and working with the individual and treating them how you would want to be treated, right? And not necessarily, well, not necessarily like how you would want to be, but how they actually want to be treated and what their biggest pain points are. Um, and it's easy. Uh, it goes back to our earlier podcast we talked about. It's not about the nail. So you right. can tell all the time and that. Like sometimes they'll be like, hey, I just have this aching. I have all this other stuff. And you'd be like, well, here's the solution. They don't care, right? They just want you to listen half the time and other things to where, and you can provide them value to where they can recognize that you are actually trying to help them, which then gives you and serves you the right to be able to be like, hey, can we just pull this nail out now? Yeah, you ultimately get to that one. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, you got the happy Gilmore of, uh, how's the nail? Comes out next week, you know. 
you know, but he's uh, got to earn that right to talk about that nail coming out, right? <laughs> but that that Jim, the classic Jim Rohn quote, uh, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And then they, uh, uh, an updated version of that is show me your five closest friends and I'll show you your future, right? So who are you actually spending those, that time with? Who are your five closest friends and what direction are you going? Uh, where do you want to go with that? And that's, that's also kind of like looking at your customers. A lot of times customers will see their customers um, you know, your clients might see their customers as close friends. They're like family. They come into a, a medical office or whatnot. They're kind of growing and raising with the family as they, they progress that throughout that lifetime value or that relationship there. And then the, the same thing in any business, um, in, in maximizing that customer lifetime value. And I think a lot of times it's uh, it's that classic people don't know how much, you know, until they know how much you care. And if you can genuinely show how much you care, that doesn't say, you know, people don't care how much you know until, unless you can, how much you can sell. That, that doesn't say that. It's, it's how much do you care and how much are you investing into that relationship with no strings attached of getting something out of it? Because ultimately we know when you do that the right way, it's going to, to come back around and they're going to ask either, can you help me with this because you've earned that trust and credibility? Or, hey, you know what? I was thinking about you the other day. A friend of mine told me that they had something and I thought of you. Will you reach out to them? Or I'm going to have them reach out to you, just as you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, well, even recently, and I've uh, a couple of the business acquaintances that I have all over the place, and that they, um, just because we've built that relationship, and I've genuinely like helped them and gone out of my way, even though it wasn't in my best interest to help them, um, they've gotten to the point where you know it's taken years. But they've gotten to the point where they're comfortable referring people to me, even in their region, be just because instead of them trying to take it on themselves, they'll actually refer it. So they're competitors, but it doesn't change that I still will build value with them and still provide value in them where they will be like, hey, you know what? He's in, you're in their area. They're a great company to work with. Uh, I would highly recommend at least giving them a call, and that, which is an absolute great relationship to have and i do yeah. the same thing back to them um and if i see a project that needs like they need help with i will try to kick it back that way to where it's a win-win situation and a lot of the time too if you want to increase the value get good at shutting up and get better at listening two ears so, one mouth right exactly so it's very easy, especially when you want to be overly helpful. And I, I find myself doing this as well. I'm just as guilty of it. You got to be conscious of it, right? Yeah. I will always try to pour, pour the value and it, it goes down to the nail, right? Like they'll say, oh, hey, I just have this, this pain, blah, blah, blah. And I'll be like, okay, yeah, it's this. Oh, it's this, it's this, it's this. And... I don't give them the time to fully express or just sit back and listen to where they are again comfortable with that ask. And it goes down, uh, it comes down to also being able to, uh, to not only listen to what their problem is, but to also listen and just uh, on like the, the, their body language, right? Um, Cause there might be more that you're, you'll quickly find that there's usually more to the story than what meets the eye. Even if, um, even if they're giving the answer up front, um, like, and you might be able to find all these other solutions, but you might find like, as you listen more and more that, well, yeah, this is the solution, but, this is actually better for them and you still don't provide them the solution the best type of relationships i found and the best value is just asking simple questions and letting them talk and so i never phrase it as a proposal or solution i phrase it as just again a simple question so someone's like okay hey I need more sales. I need to make this X, Y, and Z. Okay, great. Um, 
what are you trying to get to? What what is that look like for you? And they give you another answer. And then, okay, well, now that you said that, what um, what uh, is going on right now? What is the biggest thing? And you'll find out that even though they said, hey, I want sales and this is what I want to do and I'm just going to pay you a bunch of money to bark it for me, um, you'll find that what's the reality is, is that they might have some family issues that uh, are causing an excessive amount of stress on them and their relationship. You might find out that um, that their complete co their company has no structures, no processes, no anything else. And so even if you got them the sales, they get pissed off at you because they didn't actually convert into long term clients yep. because they have no ability to support them. Yeah, and exactly. if you shut up and listened, you were able to find actually and provide them the correct solution and just make it a simple question and be like, okay, so I hear you. You're saying all this. Would if I gave you 50,000 clients right now, do you have the capacity to handle that? No. Okay. So would it be helpful? Or a bigger priority than to try to get these other processes in place to you, and that, and they can answer and then be like, actually, yeah, you're right. That might be a better solution and everything. Right. Um, a lot of times, I'll go back yeah. to uh, what they're asking isn't what they're asking. Yeah. Right. A lot of times, you know, because they don't know exactly how to articulate what it is, but they need someone to listen to them, ask a few kind of guiding questions, and then they're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Another example of this would be, uh, there's a great book called uh, Creating Magic, authors named uh, Lee Cockerell. He's a former COO of Disney, and uh, he talks about uh, the three o'clock parade. And uh, he says that all the time in the Disney parks, the guests would come up to the cast members, the employees, and they say, hey, excuse me, what time's the three o'clock parade? You know, on the surface, you're like, hello, idiot, it's three o'clock, right? Like, you just answered your own question. But uh, so they actually put some uh, intention behind finding out what are our guests asking when they're asking what time's the three o'clock parade. And really what they found was when they asked what time's the three o'clock parade, they're asking what time does Cinderella get to where I'm standing at during the three o'clock parade. And so now that they know and I can articulate what exactly it is the customer's asking who didn't know how to ask what they're asking, now they've been able to train other people to where now they can just nail it because they know. And so now it's, hey, what time's the three o'clock parade? Oh, as a matter of fact, the three o'clock parade gets to where about we're standing at about 315. As a matter of fact, there's an open park bench right there. Go ahead and grab that seat right now and take a break while Cinderella comes by. And you have a great picture of her while she comes by on the float. And it's like, boom, this is like really listening to your customers. What are they asking? And then being able to articulate it in a way where they're like, yeah, that's exactly what I was asking, even though they didn't know that that's what they were asking. <laughs> Well, that actually gets to the other point, which is the better, like we all suck at communicating. We all suck in at, at it. And the, if you really look at most things, most fights, more, most conflicts, most contention, it's because of a failure to communicate together. And that, and you could even be saying the exact same thing just in a different way and still be about ready to rip each other's heads off because there's such a disagreement and butting heads because you're not willing to just open up, listen, and come from it from a different angle. Or um, in both of you guys aren't feeling heard. So think of it if any great conflict that you've had in your life and really what the root cause was, uh, was it. Was it really the issue itself or was it the inability or the not feeling heard? Sure. Because right. you weren't heard, and that usually that's always the accelerator in the conflict that causes the most pain, the refusal to be seen or listened to. So, uh, so I think what I hear you saying is, uh, you know, customer lifetime value isn't just with customers. It can be applied to all aspects of our lives. Is that right? Yeah. If you want a lifetime of better ROI in your relationship or marriage and that, you better damn well be a good, better listener um, and better communicator, um, a better understander. Like that's a universal thing. And you serve your spouse just like you serve your clients.
with with few exceptions. Um, it's the same way as far as as far as what you are how you are treating them in a respectful manner. You should treat everybody with that same type or dignity to level respect. Um, because it's very easy, like, and I will do this, my spouse will do this, everybody else will do this, where they will come to the table uh, or come home and start screaming about something that seems minor or insignificant. Like, I could be yelling and screaming like, hey, I am sick of this house being a mess. I am sick of this, like, being a pigsty. I'm sick of this and everything else. And... So at face value, the issue could be the mess itself. But the reality is, is when I get to that point, it's because I'm stressed, I'm overwhelmed, and it doesn't add to it, right? There's yeah, other stuff. Else. That's, yes. Like I am dealing wow. with all this stress and amplification of all this other crap or baggage that got dumped on me throughout the day. And now that it becomes the outlet. So... And, and that's what we also have to make sure that we do. Obviously, if you want to return, retain lifetime value, um, learn how to take breathers, right? So if you are having a lot of stress, anxiety, like step away, right? Uh, yeah, even with the business, there. right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, especially if you have a meeting and you're taking some of that bad energy into the meeting, that will probably do more harm than good yeah. doing that meeting. Um. And there's yeah. a few times that I've been so, like, just so much anxiety, so much stress and everything that I've just been like, you know what? We need to reschedule this meeting. I'm sorry to do this and everything. Can we please reschedule? I apologize for the inconvenience and leave it at that. Because if I engage further in that or if something comes up in that, I could eat like this. I, I am at least become self-aware enough that I know that a hairpin trigger could set it off. And I don't want to do that. And it's the same thing with your spouse, your kids, or anything else. Like step away and then communicate and, and understand like where they're coming from or anything else. They're not yeah. trying to trigger, right? So it goes back to the same the saying that a fool takes offense when offense uh, is intended. A greater fool takes offense when no offense um, or when offense is intended, right? Um, meaning that when offense is intended, we are giving them power designation over ourselves. And it goes back to, I, I know I covered this in an earlier podcast, but I've had people come after me and my business personally. They've attacked me. They've done everything else and blown up over stupid. Like it was a really stupid little thing. And I had every right to get defensive. I had every right to rip them a new one to put them into place, to make them cry, whatever, right? And sometimes we want to do that. But if you really want to build lifetime value, it's like I literally had to that like come to Jesus moment um, where I had to sit back and be like, what happened doesn't warrant this level of response. So something is there underlying. And because I was listening, I was like, is everything like and I just literally sat back and I was like, is everything okay? Are you like, and I'm not being this facetiously, like I had to calm down, like reflex and everything, and be like, are you good? Is there something going on that I need to be aware of? And because I was able to respond, sit back in such a calm manner, I still remember this person be like, I have a lot going on. Like my mother just died. I had all this stuff going. I just found out that I have terminal cancer. Uh, I was diagnosed. Like I am overwhelmed. I am, I'm lost. I don't know what to do. And I was like, I understand. That's that's a lot. That's a lot to take in and everything. I I would probably be just as stressed and like in pain as you are right now if I were just in your shoes. What can I do to help you? Right, and that's uh, that's not exactly the original uh, issue that they had with you, right? Like none of that probably had to do with your products and services and things, but it was just that outlet that that just kind of like came to a head on that. Yeah, well, it was literally. I think it honestly was. Um, 
there was, uh, I think, slow internet or something that was going on that they needed me to handle. And they were, again, bad-mouthing that, like, we didn't do our job, that we're incompetent, that we're stupid and everything else. And it was, again, really simple thing in that because there was outages in that area, something that we couldn't even really control. Yeah. And instead of being like, hey, you're a dumbass, you don't know what you're talking about, this is what's going on, and it has nothing to do with us, so, like, bug off, like, get off our ass, right? Yeah. Um that wouldn't have done anything but create a more toxic environment and then feed it in that. You yeah, know, wouldn't have solved anything. Yeah. Yeah. But because of that, they're now a great friend and somebody that can refer me because I was willing to step back and do that. So something that would have had a negative ROI with that customer that would have significantly deteriorated, turned into a bunch of bad reviews going all over my company, and steamrolled significantly faster was able to be stopped because I was able to sit back, listen to actually what was being said. Right. And so then, that's yeah. honestly the best way to maximize any client return. It's just in good, good at listening. It's as simple uh, as that. Anything yeah, you want to add, Danny? No, yeah, I think that listening is key. I mean, in uh, integrity selling professional sales process, that's uh, that's the biggest component of the entire sales process is listening. You know, uh, the customer speaking 80% of the time and the, the rep listening or, or uh, you know, that the rep speaking 20% of the time uh, the and uh, listening 80% of the time, I should say. And as they listen more than they talk, the way that you do that is by, you know, practicing and planning for high quality questions. And uh, you're not going to be able to have high quality questions or better questions than simple yes, no answers you're not going to get into a depth conversation. So you've be able to, you've got to be able to articulate what types of things that they're asking and dig deeper than what they're asking really isn't what they're asking and finding out what their three o'clock parade is, right? Like, what is that? And then as that result, just like you said, you're going to be able to maximize the ROI from that customer relationship when, you know, now they're going to be an advocate for you because you took the time of what could have been, you know, awful, turn it into a, a great customer relationship. Absolutely. So uh, I hope this provided you guys some value. And I hope you, if you listen to us long enough, you'll see that a lot of these values that we're teaching and that and believe in are all tied together, right? There's some universal principles as you listen, as you be kind, as you treat others with respect and understanding, as you don't, as you refuse to take offense, even when somebody is being offensive. Like it really does set you up for success in all aspects of life. Absolutely. There's I love a reason it. for madness. So <laughs> yep. we will catch you guys on the next one. Thank you for joining. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And that if you did get find value or if you know somebody who will gain value from this. Thanks and have a great day. Thanks, guys.